Yes, three hopefully good non-political questions. I thought of them ahead of the uh, actual segment, which means they're probably even worse than they normally are. (laughs) First question. I made a statement similar to this on Twitter that got a few people very angry with me. I'm going to ask this question, provide a definition, and then you can answer. Are agnostics intellectually cowards? Agnostic, I'm using the actual classic definition. Somebody who believes the existence of God cannot be known. I know if you Google agnostic, it'll say somebody who's asking questions. No, that's a skeptic or seeker. Or if you're asking questions with the intent to troll or otherwise embarrass, that's a scoffer. I'm talking about the classical definition of agnostic. Is right, that I intellectual think, cowardice? I think that's a key distinction then. All right. If, we're, if that is how you want to define agnostic. And that's how Webster's of 1900s or okay. would dis- describe it. So, if, so we are defining ag- agnostic as someone who believes that the ultimate truth cannot be known one way or the other, then yes, I would agree that that is gutless. Okay. Um, what it w- be, and, he, and here's why. What question is possibly more important ascertaining the answer to than that one? Like, think of all the questions in the world. Why would you give up on that one and not others? Like I've heard people say in the past, well, I got mistreated at church, maybe even badly. That's terrible, right? That terrible. You ever been dumped by a chick or a dude? You ever been dumped before? Ever had your heart broken? Ever not get a job that you wanted or got fired from one? Did you decide, I got fired from that job. It wasn't fair. I will not work again. No more jobs. I got dumped by that chick. I got cheated on by that dude. Celibacy for me now. A lot of people don't make that choice, do they? A lot of people are like, I guess I still like money. A lot of people are like, huh, I guess I still like sex. Notice that? You ever notice that? Somehow, when it comes to the church, if I got hurt once uh, or disappointed once, even seriously, that's all she wrote. But on other things, you know, I get canned from a job. I can get uh, dumped by a dude, cheated on by a chick. After a while, the loins and the hormones, hormones kick in and you're like, I'm ready to be hurt again. How come the church doesn't get that benefit of the doubt? Similarly, you're, you want to explore, you're on your seventh reading of the Similarian. Because you really do need to know the true origins of the orcs. And you really, you've got to find out who, all right, Sauron came from Morgoth. Where'd Morgoth come from? You need to know. You've got to know. So you're reading it again. But whether or not God exists just couldn't possibly be known. So if we're going with that definition of agnostic, then yes, I agree that it is gutless. If that's the definition. I like where you ended there because that's what really bothers me. Uh, these these people who will claim that about ultimate things in the real life that they actually have, when it comes to their fictional life, the the superheroes they love, you know, whatever Star Wars, uh, as you said. Um, uh, uh, Sauron and the the Lord of the Rings, or with uh, sports and knowing every jot and tittle of the the draft picks or instant replay, like you, uh, the the need for ultimate. We have to get this right. Mm-hmm. You you can see it moves every pore of their being mm-hmm. in their hobby craft. But when it comes yeah. to their real. I love, that. I love that term, by the way. Their but real yeah. life. It's like, yeah, I got to tap out. This is just, I find it tedious. Really? You don't, you don't find the color-coded rapture chart that isn't actually for the real rapture, but it's for the fictional one in that universe you follow? <laughs> you can't get enough of that. You've got to know the ultimate things of the unreal. But the real, meh, that's, that, yeah, that's cowardly. I mean, if you are... If you're showing that level of apathy and cowardice in the rest of your life, actually, I respect you more. (laughs) (laughs) Um, That's good. Yeah, I I think it's just intellectually 
cowardly. I mean, nobody really, at the end of the day, believes there is no God. I agree. There, I agree. The, the, there, there has never been an atheist in the history of humanity. Yeah. Ever. No, even atheists, I mean, e- atheists are a God unto themselves. Yes. What gets me, at least, at least in atheism, though, even if you won't admit it, you are your own God. Now, you're a terrible God. You're, you're going to be a sucky God because, you know, human beings have been known to suck, right? I don't get agnosticism, though. I'm not even going to admit that I'm, I'm not even going to uh, go into the uh, worldview where I can at least, I can at least be my own God, little small G God. Indeed. If, like I, Luther would say, if you're going to sin, sin boldly. What is the point of being an agnostic? In, in the, go the, all the way with it. The reason is yeah. there might be a power above me, but I, it's above my pay grade to know what, that it just doesn't make any sense. I, I think at the end of the day, you know, you're, you're, you ask somebody, well, why not just be full on atheist? Well, there might be a God. Well, how do you know that to be true? Or what makes you think that? And we're off. It doesn't make any sense. What makes you think that the God that there might, what do you think that, what makes you think the God that there might or may not be, if he is, or there is, would, would, you would satisfy them by never acknowledging them the entire time you were alive? What, what, how would you, why would you possibly think I could satisfy, hey, I want to go full atheist just in case. Okay. What makes you think that never acknowledging that God would please them in any way, shape, it's, or form. Especially as you, sa- uh, you said. Any God. In our conversation off air, just in the segment, we, we are, the spirit dwells in us. Mm-hmm. You know, it's. As it's believers, that, it does. Yes. Yeah, as, yes, as, as a believers, it does. But they're, you know, they're constantly being exposed to the lives of believers. And what yeah. we say about this, yeah. there's no prickling curiosity about that we're, we're we're not we're talking uh, we're talking you know existentially philosophically we can we can do that we're, it's not we're not pounding you over the head with pillars of cloud uh and 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 pillars of fire you, the, even when we go onto their terrain and indwelling which they you know they, 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 Freud, they, they they'll They'll talk your ear off about Sigmund Freud, uh, about uh, uh, Sartre, about, uh, you know, it, it, all that stuff. Okay. You want to get, we're, as, as Christians, really, we're like, you want to get nuts? Let's get nuts. And this, I think, coming full circle to Aaron's point, I think this is their, to all that, this is their defense mechanism. We as Christians are always willing to meet them where they're at on this. And that drives them nuts. So this is their little escape valve. That they're just kind of too cool for school.